Okay, in this video we will be doing conversions using metric prefixes. So the first thing we need to know is you have to learn these metric prefixes. You have to learn these prefixes as conversion factors. So we have a sample, this is not all, but these are some commonly used prefix multipliers and you will have to learn these. Now the way we set up a conversion factor, let's take and look at kilo for example. Just say we have kilo small k gram. The way we would set up that conversion factor we would say that one kilogram is equal to 10 to the third grams. What if we wanted to look at milligrams? We would say one milligram is equal to 10 to the minus three grams. Now, one thing that's important about these metric prefixes is that we have a pattern. Let's go on down to nanogram. One nanogram is equal to 10 to the minus nine grams. We see this kilo, milli, and this nano. That is the metric prefix. So, what we want to keep in mind is that one, when we're setting up these conversion factors, the number one, there are other ways to do it, but to be consistent with this book, and we think this is the best way to do it, one always goes with the metric prefix. When I say one always goes with the metric prefix, this is a metric prefix one, that's a metric prefix one, that's a metric prefix. So one will always go with the metric prefix. Now, its exponential equivalent will go on the other side of the equal sign. Whereas kilo means 10 to the third, 10 to the third goes on the opposite side, milli means 10 to the minus three. That's where we got that right there. It goes on the opposite side. Nano, I don't know if you can see that's 10 to the minus nine. Nano, its exponential equivalent is 10 to the minus nine. So that is the way we set up these problems in order to convert from one unit to another, one exponential unit to another. So the first thing that we're going to do is what we call a single step conversion. Now a single step conversion practically means going from a prefix or a base unit back to a prefix. So for example, we will go from a liter to a milliliter, or we can go from a microgram to a gram. That's a single step conversion. Now, it's single step because we call this liter the base or home unit. This gram is also the base unit. So, in order to do the single step conversions, we have to set up our conversion factors. We have to set up our conversion factors. Let's look at 
number one, example one, we have 45 meters and we want to convert that to nanometers. Well, we must find a relationship between meter and nanometer. So what is that relationship? Well, you will have learned by working enough problems that in one nanometer, we have 10 to the minus nine meters. This is our conversion factor. From this equality, that means that this is true and 10 to the minus 9 meters over 1 nanometer. These are also true because in the previous video we recognize that those ratios are indeed equal to 1. So how do we convert? So the first thing that we will do is we'll set up our multiplication problem that says 45 meters. Now we need the conversion factor. So in one nanometer we have 10 to the ni negative 9 meters. Excuse me if I said 9 is 10 to the minus 9 meters. So we know what unit we want to get rid of, so we put that in the bottom. We know the unit that we want to obtain. We put that in the top, the numerator. So we see this unit cancels. And all we do is simply put in these numbers that are accompanied by the unit. So in one nanometer we have 10 to the minus 9 meters. So that winds up being 45 times 10 to the ninth nanometer because nanometer is a unit that remains. Writing that in scientific notation, we can write 4.5, move that decimal point one place, times 10 to the 10th nanometers. And that would be how we would do that single step conversion for number one. Okay, let's look at number two. Number two works in the same fashion that number one did. The key is we have to know our prefix multipliers, our exponentials. Okay, so we want to go from 97 millimeters and we want to convert that to meters. Well, milli right here has the exponential of 10 to the minus 3. You will learn that. So, 1 milli meter, 1 going with the metric prefix, is equal to the exponential of 10 to the minus 3 meters. Okay, that is our conversion factor. So, I can simply put millimeters here and meters here. And what is the relationship? In one millimeter, I have 10 to the minus 3 meters. If we look, the denominator cancels with the unit in the numerator. 
that is equal to 97 times 10 to the minus 3 meters. Now if I write that in correct scientific notation, that would be 9.7 times 10 to the minus 2 meters. Okay, now the last one does not involve a single step conversion. The last one involves a multi-step conversion. Let's see, can we do a multi-step conversion? So this would be multi for number three. So we want to go from the unit of picometers. We want to go to the base unit of meters. And we want to go from meters to megameters. Now, let's recognize two things. That there is a relationship between picometer and meter and there is a relationship between meter and megameter. So that implies that we're going to need two conversion factors. And let's just write those two out. So relative to the picometer and one picometer we have 10 to the minus 12 meters. Okay, that's our first relationship. Our second relationship is in one megameter. We have 10 to the 6 meters. Okay, so let's follow this flowchart to go from picometers to meters to megameters. So we have 975 picometers times, I know I want to eliminate the unit of picometers, so I put that in the denominator, and I want meters in the numerator. Now, what is my relationship? So 1 goes with picometer here, 10 to the minus 12 goes in the numerator. Notice here that the unit of picometers cancel. So when I perform this operation of 975 times 10 to the minus 12, I wind up with some number in the unit of meters. But we are not finished because we have to go from meter to megameter. So, I know I want to get rid of the unit of meter. I know I want to obtain the unit of megameter. So, what is my relationship? In one megameter, I have 10 to the 6 meters. Notice the units of meters cancel, and I'm left with the unit of megameter. Now, when I multiply 975 times 10 to the minus 12 divided by 10 to the 6, I wind up with some number in megameters. So let's work this out. <clears throat> 975 times 10 to the minus 12. 
Since this exponential is in the denominator, I can use my laws of exponents and bring it to the numerator. By bringing it to the numerator, I have to change the sign of the exponential where it's 10 to the 6, it now becomes 10 to the minus 6. Okay, that's one way we can work that. So I would have 975 times 10. I need to sum my exponents like bases so 12 a negative 12 and a minus 6 add those together that gives me 10 to the minus 18 mega meter now I can put this in scientific notation moving this decimal place twice what I've actually done is say 975 times 10 to the minus 18 times 10 to the second power. So I will add 2 to this 18 and that would give me 9.75. I moved it two places to the left at 2 times 10 to the minus 16 mega meters. And that's how we would solve that problem.